Hello everyone. In this lecture video, I want to talk a little bit about the gas laws. So in your course resources with your cheat sheets, you have one here with the gases, and this has your conversions for pressure. That's at the top there. You notice that we see one atmosphere, and that is the standard unit for atmospheric pressure. Um, that is equal to all of those other figures. So you can use those in your conversion factors for pressure. Atmospheric pressure is the pressure that's exerted by the gases around us. And what we feel um, in terms of atmospheric pressure is equal to an elephant standing on a doormat, which seems like a lot of pressure. We don't feel it. Okay, um, and that is the pressure at sea level. As we go higher in elevation, so if we go up into the mountains or if we're on an airplane, the air pressure is lower. There's less of that atmospheric gas that's pressing down on us. So the atmospheric pressure is lower and you may experience this sometimes um, you know if your ears pop if you've ever been on an airplane or if you've ever gone up on the top of a mountain and your ears popped what you were experiencing is the difference in the atmospheric pressure so when we look at atmospheric pressure we have all of these different units that we can use the SI unit or our metric system unit official unit is KPA, which is kilopascals, that unit is kind of outdated and we don't really use that one a lot anymore. The majority of the ones that you'll see in the problems that will work will be in atmospheres or millimeters of mercury or tor occasionally and sometimes PSI, you'll see those as well. So, um, when we look at the actual gas laws, these are the laws that govern how gases behave. And you'll see here we have Boyle's Law, Charles's Law, um, Gay-Lussac's Law. We also have the Combined Gas Law. We have Dalton's Law. We have the Ideal Gas Law. And then one that I neglected to put on your, um, your sheet here is... Avogadro's Law, and, and we'll talk about that one. So what you've got here are the mathematical formulas to work problems for the gas laws. Conceptually, what we're looking at is the comparison of two of the variables of gases. When we look at a gas and we just determine its state of matter, we know that a gas is made up of molecules that are always in motion and that take up the shape of their container and their volume can also vary. They expand to fill their container. With that knowledge about gases and the fact that they're in random motion, the fact that they can expand, which means they increase in volume, we can look at four different factors of the gases. We look at pressure, volume, temperature, and then the number of moles, or just the amount of gas we have. And we can express relationships between these different variables. So make sure that you have this cheat sheet handy when you begin to work the problems that are going to be in your um, lab assignment and also the um, simulation and the gas laws worksheet that you'll have to do. You'll also encounter problems on the next assessment. So what I want to do now is go through a little bit of the of how to work these problems, how to set these problems up, and how to work these problems so you understand how to do the math. The first law that we'll explore is Edmonton's or the Gay-Lussac law. 
this is listed on your cheat sheet as Gay Lussac's law, as he is the one who really identified the relationship between temperature and pressure more precisely. So this law looks at the variables of temperature and pressure, and Gay Lussac determined that it is what we refer to as a direct relationship, which means what one does, the other one does. So if we increase temperature, we increase pressure. If we decrease temperature, we decrease pressure. And you may experience this in your everyday life with your tire pressure in your vehicle. So we're kind of in the middle of a cold snap right now. And so you may have gotten up and gotten into your vehicle and had your low tire light come on. The reason for that is the drop in temperature has now caused a drop in pressure of the air that's in your tires. So your tire pressure might be low. So this is an example of a direct relationship. And when we have a direct relationship like this, then we can set up our problems in using a certain formula and be able to determine what is going to happen if we increase or decrease one of those variables. We can set up a relationship here with the pressure and temperature variables that looks something kind of like this, and this is what you'll see on your cheat sheet. So this letter K here, it basically is just referred to as a constant, and it represents some number. Really what this does is it allows us to set up a relationship comparing two temperatures and pressures or two different gases or two different pressures or different temperatures of the same gas. So when we um, solve for K here, we have something that looks like this. Now since K is just some number, then this allows us to establish a relationship between the two gases that looks like this. So when you work a problem that involves temperature and pressure like this, you're going to be given three of the four variables and you're going to solve for the fourth. So you may have a problem that says something about the pressure of a gas is 750 millimeters of mercury at 25 degrees Celsius. What is the pressure at 50 degrees Celsius? So that's what you're going to look for in these types of problems. Occasionally in these types of problems you may have a volume thrown in there. But as long as the volume remains constant, then we can still use this formula to solve for the fourth variable. The key thing to remember about this law and this relationship is that your temperature must be in Kelvin. We talked about Kelvin a while ago you watched a video called the temperature guys where you looked at the three different units of temperature so our temperature must be in Kelvin so in order to get the temperature in Kelvin you take the temperature in Celsius and you add 273 that will give you your temperature in Kelvin so remember any time that temperature is in there as a variable in any of these gas law equations, you must first convert the temperature to Kelvin. So here I have a problem that involves the use of Gay-Lussac law, where I have an initial temperature and pressure, and then a different temperature, and then I'm asked what is the new pressure. You'll see the volume is listed, but that's extra information. We don't need that at all to solve this problem because it doesn't tell us that there's a change in volume. It just says the can has a volume of 350 milliliters. So we really don't need that information. So when I get ready to set up this problem, 
I like to do this. I like to write all of my variables down first so I can kind of figure out what it is that I'm that I have and what it is that I'm looking for. So my initial pressure is 360 kilopascals and my initial temperature is 24 degrees Celsius. And then I'm asked what is the new pressure in the can. So that's what I'm looking for, my P2 there, my second pressure. And I'm told that my second temperature or my T2 is 50 degrees Celsius. Since my temperature is in Celsius, I need to add 273 to both of these to convert those into Kelvin. So I'm going to have 297 Kelvin for my T1, and I'll have 323 Kelvin for my T2. So then I'm ready to plug into my formula. That's really what the gas laws are. Once you figure out what gas law you need to use, then you essentially just plug in your numbers. So I've got 360 kilopascals for my P1, 297K for my T1. I'm looking for my P2, and I have 323K for T2. So in order to set this up and solve, I'm just going to cross multiply. So I'm going to have 360 kPa times 323k equals 297k times my P2 because that's what I'm looking for. So in order to solve for P2, I need to divide both sides by 297k, so those will cancel, and then my units of Kelvin will cancel here. I'm left with units of kPa, which I know are units of pressure, and that's what I'm looking for. So now it's just a matter of plugging this in the calculator and solving. So I'll say 360 times 323 equals, divided by 297 equals, and I'll come over here, P2, and I get 391.52. Of course, that's going to be kilopascals as my unit. Now I need to consider significant digits. Okay. So when I look at these significant digits here, I'm only going to have two significant digits. We don't really consider temperature when we look at significant figures. But if I look at this, this zero here, because there's not a decimal behind it, is not significant. Okay, so I only have two significant digits. So when I get my answer here, I need only two in my two significant digits in my answer. So I'm gonna have 390 kilopascals. So that's how you work this type of problem. The last thing that you should do when you work gas law problems is make sure your answer actually makes sense. So we know that if pressure goes up, temperature goes up. If temperature goes up, pressure goes up. So in this example, our temperature went up. We should expect our pressure to also increase. When we look at our answer, we see, yes, we did get an increase. We started at 360, we ended at 390. So yes, that is an increase. So yes, my answer makes sense in the context of this problem. In the next video, I'll go over Charles's Law, Boyle's Law, and Avogadro's Law, as well as look at the Ideal Gas Law.